Welcome to the second part on lighting of the Hammer How To tutorial. This part is all on effects. And what I have playing right now are screenshots from maps that I've made with lighting effects that can totally change how the look and feel the map is from raw lighting to a full lighting effect. And as we can see in here, this is just the sun glow. It's a lot better than just the light environment giving you light. In here, we have just a some glows on lights that's really simple but it looks a lot better than just the light in here we have glows on the lights high above and we have dust mote particles that are floating through the air that make it look like the light is actually shining down on it it looks very realistic and here we have more lights that have like their stadium lights that have the beam shooting down from them and right here we have light glow that is coming from the light onto the shadow. Looks very realistic, looks very good, and it also has the dustmos dust most in it that makes it also look very good. And so, what we're gonna do in this tutorial is learn how to do all this stuff. So right here, I just have a light. This one is going to be pretty relatively simple. You create an entity, you make it a prop, static, and do a search for light. And then you can pretty much find just a light model that works with whatever you're going for. Um, I'm just going to go with like a cage light or something after I find one. Usually you want to pick your colors based on your light model. If you find one that doesn't work, then change the color to the model. And after you find the light, put it where you want it, rotate it so it looks like it matches. And now here's the rookie mistake that a lot of people have. You don't put the light right on the model like this. You want to pull it away a little bit. You don't want it to be right on the effect because then it looks like it's it's super bright. So you pull it away just a little bit. And then you create an NV sprite. You'll notice you get a box that's black and white. You want to change render mode to world space glow. And then you want to place this in front of the light, pretty much right on it. Just in front of it, though. And then you choose a scale until you find something that you're happy with. And then you want to choose the RGB value from the light, paste them onto the color. And that's pretty much it for that. So that's all that that is. If it seems too bright, you can turn it down or whatever you need to do. And in here we have a light spot. I'm going to put this on like a work light. So again, prop static. Search for light. This one. So now I'm going to put this one just like this. And then I want to line up my light with it. But before I do that, I'm going to create all the effects on it so they all get rotated at the same time. So I create a copy of the light. To do this, you hold down shift and drag. And then you want to change it to a point spotlight. And this creates the glow like we saw in the pictures from Wolfenstein and from BA Uprise in the yard. And then you go to the light. Under brightness, you copy the RGB values and you put them under color then you choose your length and width this is all choice on what you want, I usually do 750 then I'll do 55 it, sometimes it'll take a couple tries to get exactly how you want it and then what you want to do is you just want to line it up with the model so it looks like it's being actually projected from the light but you don't want to make it too close because then the light will actually be stuck in the model like it's trapped there and it will never be able to leave so it'll it'll look very wrong and once you get it all lined up you want to pull it away a little bit you don't want it in the light because then it'll be trapped then you select everything and rotate your light how you want it and then to get a perfect lighting you copy your light spot and you make it just a light now it will have the same settings, but only you want to turn the brightness down really, really low because you want this to just be like ambient lighting around the light. And then you put that right in front, and you'll see what it looks like in-game. And now I have a skylight here, 
in the skylight is going to project the light glows that we saw like in the tunnel. And for this, we select a no draw. We make a box where our, our glow is going to be. I've already compiled my map once, so I know where the light is actually going to end up. I would advise you compile once so you see where the light's going to go. I know mine's going about right there. And then you take your vertex tool and you select the bottom points and you move them to about where it's going to be. And then that's all you do for that and then you meet up all the points to wherever that this is going to come in from. And then you go to your texture browser and you type in VOL. V -O -L. You'll see three things. Vmetric fog, models vol light one, and models vol light two. I usually use one, and then you right-click on each face to apply it. You'll see that it kind of disappears. It's still there. And then you press Control-T, and you want to make it a Funk Illusionary. If you want more of a glow effect, you can copy the entity with Shift-Drag, and you just want to make it a couple segments smaller than what it actually is. So you'll see the effect appear a bit more now. Then you want to drag and copy one more time and you want to browse for trigger and you apply trigger and you place it right over and you want to make this one a funk dust motes and this will be the dust that we see floating and to get good dust typically choose like a golden color because that's what it seems like it it looks like then you set the alpha up just a bit to about 50 and then minimum particle size, you want this to be smaller because you don't want it to be too big, so you want dust. So I usually do 20 and the maximum particle size will be 50. And then you leave all the other settings stock. If you want more particles, you can add particles per second to a higher value. And now we're going to do the sun. So to do this, you create an envy sun. And I like to put mine right by my light environment. And you want to copy the angles from the light environment to the envy sun, and you want user angles to be yes. And you can change the color and whatever you need to whatever you want to be. And then you want your pitch to be the same pitch as the envy suns. So you want this to be negative, 63, or you can change it to whatever you want. And now we're also going to do shadows to match. So you do shadow controller. Throw that up on the wall too. You want to paste your Envy Sun things in there, and you want to get rid of the minus in front of the first angle. And then compile the map. I'll see you in Counter Strike. And now we're in Counter Strike. We'll see that our light out here has a glow on it. It seems pretty much perfect. We look up in the sky, and we see the sun. Come inside, we see the lights and the dust motes from the vol. You'll see that they do need to be put on an angle, but you can fiddle with that all you want. It'll take a couple tries until you get pretty good at it. Then over here we have our light with the, the glow on it. And then if we switch to third person, see that our shadow is exactly the same with the static shadows of the map. It's because of the, uh, the controller, the shadow controller. I hope this tutorial helped.